Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Wednesday, the 19th of September, 2018. Taking a look at what's happening in the tropics today, fortunately, not much. We do have this one area that the National Hurricane Center has outlined with a low probability of development. If we look at it over the next five days, you can see really not much chance of this getting going. I'll show you what it looks like on satellite in just a minute. And then up here in the subtropics, 20% chance from a non-tropical area of low pressure. This will probably develop and just kind of mill around up here, adding to the named storm pile and the accumulated cyclone energy index, or the ACE score. The ACE index is a, me a measure of how much energy has been output from tropical cyclones, including subtropical storms. Those are storms that have a sort of a hybrid mix of tropical features and mid-latitude storm systems. So looking at the satellite picture for this morning here from Tropical Tidbits, actually a series of pictures in a nice animation. This is the area in the intertropical convergent zone region down around 10 degrees north latitude that the Hurricane Center has outlined for now. And you can see that there's just a little bit of broad turning. There's a lot of moisture down here, a lot of energy available in the form of latent heat or moisture in the atmosphere but I don't see this doing much. We are in a suppressed pattern right now for development, really not much going on in the atmosphere to foster development. So look at it as the atmosphere is bullying the tropics. There's really not much encouragement from the atmosphere to boost the tropics and get one of these disturbances to really take off. Uh, we will be watching the remnants of Florence up here as the global computer models suggesting that this may sink south and try to redevelop over the warm waters of the western Atlantic. And we can see that reflected here in the European, uh, the ECMWF. This is the initial map from the Zero Z run last night. And here's some of that vorticity energy associated with uh, a, a trough of low pressure, an area of convergence already. This is the energy associated with an upper level low pressure area in the atmosphere. And you can see how this is kind of carved out a little trough of its own. Just follow those wind barbs there. And so if we go through the time frame, uh, this is 24 hours, so this would be valid tonight. And you can see this moves off the coast, develops sort of a broad area of vorticity or spin, and it's right over the Gulf Stream uh, that comes up through here. No doubt about that. Uh, 48 hours out, so this would be valid Thursday night. Is that right? Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Yep. And then Saturday night, or Friday night, Saturday night, sorry, Sunday night. So it does not do much out here, but it's something to keep an eye on in case it changes its mind, so to speak. They don't really have minds, but you understand what I'm talking about, I'm sure. Uh, and this is not unprecedented. Back in 2004, after Ivan made landfall here in Gulf Shores, Alabama, this is not the exact track, but... It went up and came around the ridge and came back and made landfall over here somewhere. Look up Ivan, Hurricane Ivan on Wikipedia and check out that track. I probably should have pulled it up ahead of time, but I just thought of it now, so my apologies. But the bottom line, looking back at the graphic here, the satellite animation, we are in a, a sort of a timeout, and that's great. We need it. But in about a week to 10 days and then into October, probably mid-October, I am concerned about this area through here, uh, possibly having one or two more systems develop. And with all the heat content res uh, still residing there, it could be very active with an intense hurricane forming. And that is not, you know, hyperbolic speculation. That's the time of year when they do that. We have seen it in the past. I'm not talking about something that, oh, Mark, that'll never happen. Come on. You know, you're just making stuff up. Mitch, you know, Wilma, plenty of others have developed in that area that were very strong over the warmest heat content source in the Western Hemisphere. And we are seeing the signals from the global models just like we did before the burst out here that led to the landfall of Florence. That was well telegraphed in advance. I mean, honestly, you cannot get any better than that. So we're seeing the signs again for this area. What does that mean for you? Well, just keep an eye on things, you know, a daily check-in, 
I'll keep these fairly brief between now and then unless there's something more to talk about. Uh, and that being the case, I'm going to live up to that and make it fairly brief today. If there's not much to talk about, there's not much to talk about. We'll take it. Um, so I'm going to go meet my family up at I-40 at the uh, rest stop up there near Benson and lead the wife and kids home. Dad coming in to save the day. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to get back from Raleigh and elsewhere into Wilmington now, uh, so I'm not too worried about it, but the kids will be glad to see me. One of them can ride with me, maybe two of them, who knows. And uh, we can all be reunited. We have air conditioning, the power's on, no internet, except for me for my work. Uh, so the kids are going to be like, ugh. <laughs> I'll be like, go out in the yard and clean up pieces of the fence that blew over, etc. There's plenty to do around here. All right, that is it for me for today. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.